Good afternoon, and welcome to Smoky Valley Middle School's annual Veterans Day ceremony. We are here to recognize our veterans and celebrate the freedom we enjoy because of their courage and sacrifice. We hope you enjoy the program we have prepared for you today, and we would like to start by having you all stand for the presentation of the flags and our Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. and remember by Michael Story.
And now our eighth graders will tell us about the history of Veterans Day and the flag, and then we will hear from this year's essays readers. How Veterans Day was named. In 1921, an American soldier, his name known but to God, was buried on a Virginia hillside overlooking the Potomac River and the city of Washington. The Arlington National Cemetery burial site of this unknown World War I soldier became the personification of dignity and reverence for America's veterans. Similar ceremonies occurred earlier in England and France, where an unknown soldier was buried in each nation's highest place of honor. These memorial gestures all took place on November 11th, giving universal recognition to the celebrated ending of World War I hostilities at 11 a.m. November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. November 11th became known as Armistice Day. Armistice Day officially received its name in America in 1926, and it became a national holiday in 1938. World War I would have been the war to end all wars. November 11th might still be called Armistice Day. Shortly after the holiday was proclaimed, World War II broke out in Europe and shattered the dream. 16 and a half million Americans took part and 406,000 died. The families and friends of these dead had longed for a way to honor their memory. In answer to this dilemma of how to pay tribute to those who had served in this latest great war, came a proposal made by Representative Edwin K. Rees of Kansas. Change Armistice Day to Veterans Day and make this an occasion, an occasion to honor those who have served in America in all wars. President Eisenhower, 1954, signed the bill proclaiming November 11th as Veterans Day, and he called for the Americans everywhere to rededicate themselves to the cause of peace. The old glory story. To veterans throughout American history, the Stars and Stripes has served as a symbol of their service and as a continuing testimony that their service was worthwhile. Since many flags of early American contained stripes in their design and several others had stars, there are varying accounts of when and where the first Stars and Stripes was flown. Flag history experts agree, however, that the first stars and stripes to have the general form we recognize today did not appear until the summer of 1777, when the Continental Congress for formally resolved that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternate red, white, and that the Union be 13 white stars and a blue field of representing a new constellation. Interestingly, the Congress did not specify the arrangement of the shape of the stars, the direction of the stripes, or the relative size of the various components. It was not until 1912 that the flag was finally assured a uniform appearance when President Taft signed an executive order prescribing the relative size, shape, and positioning of the components. A subject of almost as much debate as the shape and design of the flag has even the question of how and when to display the stars and stripes. Since 1942, when a law was first enacted to govern actual display of the flag, the guiding statement had, has been that the flag should be flown on days when the weather permits. The generally accepted in interpretation was, when the, was that the colors could be shown only between sunrise and sundown, and even then, not during inclement weather. Growing sentiment that old glory should be kept flying irrespectfully of darkness and foul weather accumulated in 1976, when President Ford signed legislation providing that when a patriotic effect is desired, the flag may be displayed 24 hours a day if properly illuminated during the hours of darkness. The new law also permits the stars and stripes to remain flying through inclement weather when a, when a flag of all weather material is used. In addition to its, its historical significance for permitting the, nation, the national colors to remain aloft indefinitely for a patriotic effect, the 1976 legis legislation may be remembered for giving life to old glory. The new flag code contains the provision that the flag represents a loving country and itself considered a living thing.
Today is a day to remember all of the things that veterans have done for us and to thank them for their service. All the veterans that we are remembering today have shown certain qualities. They have all shown sacrifice, bravery, and loyalty. When was the last time you had to sacrifice something? It could have been a little money to the offering at church or maybe volunteering your time in your community. While these are all good things, they probably do not affect your life in a huge way. Sometimes it is hard for us to sacrifice the little things in life, but it is good to stop and think about how much the veterans of our country have sacrificed for us. Our veterans have sacrificed so much for us. Some have sacrificed having a normal life and have missed out on their children growing up. They have sacrificed being able to plan for the future because the future is never a sure thing. But they are willing to make the ultimate sacrifice of their own lives. So the next time you have to sacrifice something, think of all the things that veterans have sacrificed for you. Has there ever been a time in your life that has required you to show a lot of bravery? It could have been that you had to make a speech in front of a large crowd, or maybe you had to stand up to someone at school. At the time, it may have felt like the scariest thing ever, but after the fact, you get over it. But if you stop and think about how brave our veterans have been, you may start to think that what you thought was scary isn't so scary anymore. They showed bravery going into the armed forces because they knew that it would not be easy, but they were brave and did not back down. They also have shown bravery in the wars and battles that they have fought in. They knew that their lives were on the line, but they showed bravery and stood their ground. They have been brave enough to fight for our country, even if it meant dying for our freedoms. How have you shown loyalty in your life? Maybe you have been loyal to your friend by following through with your commitments and not, or not trash talking them behind their backs. Or maybe you have shown loyalty to the U.S. by sure serving on a jury, voting in elections, or saying the Pledge of Allegiance. But the veterans of the U.S. have shown a higher level of loyalty to our country and its people. They are willing to stand with Americans to defend them, even if it means putting their lives on the line for us. So thank you, veterans, for sacrificing so much for us. Thank you for showing bravery in order to protect us. Thank you for showing loyalty to America and its people. America would not be the same without you. When I was first told to write an essay on what a veteran means, I did what any other 13-year-old would do, and I Googled it. According to the internet, it said, a veteran is a person who has served in the military. I believe being a veteran means much more than this. I have had the privilege as a Boy Scout and great-grandson of one of the greatest veterans I know to understand its deeper meaning. Every Memorial Day, me and my fellow scouts honor fallen veterans at three different cemeteries. We do this side by side, with other veterans who understand that a veteran means sacrifice. The first thing any soldier must be willing to do is lay down his or her life for the country. In today's world, many people consider it a sacrifice to go without television. It is hard, it's hard to wrap your head around the fact that people willingly sign up to sacrifice their lives for others. But that's what a veteran means. A veteran is also brave. Obviously, the willingness to sacrifice their life means they're brave but they also have to have the guts, willpower, and determination to set off into the unknown, and often for those, often for those they've never even met. Both of my great-grandfathers fought bravely in World War II, one setting off for Europe to liberate concentration camps, the other on a boat headed to Asia. When the bravest thing I've ever done is sleeping in the woods for a night without a tent, it's hard to imagine the level of bravery that it must take to be a soldier and being far away from the comforts of home. A veteran is also called a service man or woman, which brings me to my last point. While service is in the definition of a veteran's job, it is clear that it is the center of who vet veterans are and not just a job description. You can always see veterans hard at work serving their local communities and, count and count country to see, what, to see what they fought for continues to be a reality. Whether it's like my great-grandfather, Warren Webster, who is always serving our church, tree board, the VFW, and their many activities in the community, you always see veterans serving others, making our world a better place, off of the battlefield, as well as on it. Service is, is at the center of what a veteran means. I am proud to be a Boy Scout who understands and respects what a veteran means, and that we honor the flag in our country that these brave veterans have served and sacrificed for. They deserve nothing less from all of us.
definition of a veteran is someone who has served or is serving in the armed forces. However, when I hear the word veteran, I think of something different. In my opinion, a veteran is an amazing person who is brave and courageous. These people are the ones who are willing to go out and put their lives on the line to fight to ensure our freedom and protect our way of life. Someone once said, a soldier doesn't fight because they hate what is in front of them, they fight because they love what they left behind. I think this quote is extremely accurate. They don't choose to leave behind their loved ones just because they want to, or just because they want to be a hero. In fact, every single veteran I've ever met is extremely humble. They have all often said things like, I'm not the real hero. The real heroes are the ones who didn't make it back from the war. But this isn't true. They do so much more for us and they give themselves credit for it because of the fact that they are so humble. Not only do we need to thank these people for fighting for us, but we also need to thank them for sacrificing so much to do so. Many soldiers have had to miss their child's first words or steps because they were gone fighting for our country. This isn't anywhere near the amount of things they have to sacrifice for us. While you're sitting in a movie theater getting annoyed at the baby crying behind you, there could be a soldier who just received pictures of their newborn baby and wants nothing more than to be with them right now. Soldiers have to go through so many hardships to protect our country. You get mad because your meeting is going to run 30 minutes over, while a soldier is being told that they're going to have to stay to fight for another two months, if not longer. You get so much as a tiny little headache and be calling sick to work or stay home from school. Many other way worse things are happening where a soldier is and they keep moving no matter what. Sometimes they don't even get to go home for Christmas or Thanksgiving because of what they're doing for us. Whether someone supports or doesn't support these troops is irrelevant because either way they are still out there fighting for us day and night. You hang up that American flag in front of your house, but these people are the ones who fought to give you the right to do so. We are all happy to know that our country is considered as the land of the brave. However, these soldiers are the brave ones that earned us that title. All I ask of you is that you thank these men and women for their time and service to this country and think about what they went through for us. So thank you veterans from the bottom of my heart for everything you have done. This time we will do the marches of the armed forces. If you could please stand during the during your branch that you serve and as the song plays.
At this time, we would like to pass the microphone around the audience and ask the veterans to stand and introduce themselves and tell us the branch of service they were in and where they had served. William Johnson, U.S. Navy. I served in Desert Storm, um, 88 through 96. Emil Peterson, United States Air Force, Germany. Korean War all over the Pacific. Cy Alma, I served in the Air Force. Uh, I was stationed in the Philippines, uh, Vietnam, Thailand, Taiwan, and Germany, and eight states, including two regional sites in Alaska. This is my dad, Gene Wooster, who served in the United States Navy from 1944-46 in the South Pacific in Everest. This is my husband, Robert Summerfield. He served in the Navy from 1955 to 1959 in the Pacific on an aircraft carrier. Lord Webster, World War II, U.S. Navy Armed Guard, all the theaters. My name is Burr, U.S. Navy, World War II. Rick Saunders, Navy, USS Voice out of Little Creek, Virginia. Bob Corbin, U.S. Army. Steve Alston, 1995 to present, Iraq and Egypt. Steve Halp, uh, U.S. Army. 69, 72, Vietnam. Gary Neuschaefer, U.S. Army Reserve, 1961 through 1967. Terrence Carlson, I served in the Navy about most of a year in the Mediterranean and then about nine months out in the Pacific. U.S. Army in 1995 as a gunner on an Abrams tank crew member. Lord Hill, 
Hawaiian card, Vietnam, United States Marine Corps. Ann Anderson, 62, 65, U.S. Army. Chuck Delaney, U.S. Navy, retired, Vietnam, 68, 69. Fred Marston, U.S. Navy, like person. Vietnam, 1971-72. Bill Olson, United States Navy, Vietnam. Chuck Alvin, uh, U.S. Army, Vietnam. Van Fishback, uh, Ben Long, 70 and 72. Dale Westone, I served in the U.S. Army in 68 and 69 in Vietnam. Keith Kant, U.S. Army. I served with the 1st Cavalry Division in Korea, South Korea. Mike Gordy, U.S. Army, 68-69. Dennis Kibler, United States Marine Corps, retired. United States Army, OEF. Tom Spivey, United States Army, serving Iraq and Kuwait. Chad Kibler, United States Marine Corps, 92 to 2000. Chet Peterson, Air Force in 1945. And Jerry Unce, United States Navy Hospital Corpsman, stationed with the United States Marine Corps, 1961 to 66, in uh, Okinawa, Japan, and in California. And United Air Force nurse. Air Force, Sergeant Saudi. Army National Guard, 1958-64. Herb Baird, uh, Navy Corpsman. 1963 to 69. R.D. Rasmussen is in the United States Army in Vietnam, 1968 to 69. Neil Walker, uh, Air Force, Sky Air Force Base, 68 to 70. Growth, U.S. Navy, Vietnam. Tom Blanchett, U.S. Navy, 71 to 75. BQ-4, no tackle moment. Uh, 
maybe more uh, Air National Guard still serving at uh, their uh, weapons range. We don't get Ron very often, and we'd like to recognize him not only for his service to this country, but also his service to SVMS for the last 10 years. Uh, Ron has been a great addition to our building, and the kids love him, we love him, and he will be retiring after this year is what he's telling us. So. today to have Mr. Gary Nelson as our guest speaker. Mr. Nelson is a U.S. Army veteran that served from 1970 to 1972. He completed his basic training at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. He did his advanced individualized training, AIT, for military police at Fort Gordon, Georgia. He then trained with the U.S. Navy at the Naval Inshore Training Operations Center in Vallejo, California be part of a crew on a patrol boat rivercraft, a PBR, gunship in Vietnam. Mr. Nelson served the majority of Vietnam tour in the central highlands of Vietnam, providing security for U.S. Army engineers that were building, then repairing and rebuilding roads and bridges. Mr. Nelson was discharged from the U.S. Army at the end of his Vietnam tour. Please join me in welcoming Gary Nelson. nice to be here and see so many veterans. Uh, the last time I was here, uh, I actually was working for the school district at that point in time. But it's a great honor for me to be here today, and I'll explain a little bit more why it's such a great honor uh, after a little bit, but I want to do a few other things first. As many of you know, I was born and raised in Lynchburg. I graduated from Lynchburg High School in 1969. Fall of that year, I attended Washburn University. Uh, I was going to major in psychology. And on December 1st, 1969, was the first draft lottery since the World War II had their draft lottery. And uh, after that lottery, four of my cousins who had graduated from college got drafted. And I came home and I visited with my dad and I said, you know what? I'm not going to go to school for three more years. And then get drafted. So I volunteered for the draft. Now the difference between drafting and, and enlisting is that when you draft it's a two-year uh, active duty with six years of, of uh, reserve duty. If you enlist it's three years of uh, active duty and then the reserve duty. And so I chose to take the chance with uh, the two years, and uh, fortunately that worked out. I think if I'd have stayed in school, it maybe would have been a moot point, and maybe I wouldn't have gone to Vietnam. But I am a U.S. Army Vietnam veteran, and as Mr. Scritchfield said, I was drafted, and I told my dad I didn't know why they wanted me to be a military policeman, because I don't really look like the kind of guy that's gonna roll you in a ball. You know? uh, but, but anyway, I think it had to do with being from the Midwest and all the tests we took. Uh, I think maybe you're honest and integrity. I'm going to see an integrity that came out of all of that. As a, he said in the introduction, 
I trained with the Navy, which is really kind of odd, uh, to be on a BBR gunboat. And fortunately for me, when I went to Vietnam, the unit I went to, the 359th uh, Transportation Unit, actually turned those over to the South Vietnamese shortly after I was there. So I didn't have to have that duty uh, for my entire tour. So then I went to a place called the Anfield. And that was situated in the Central Highlands. And we had an engineer group there. And they were repairing, like you said, roads and bridges. It was a 15 to 20 mile stretch of road that rose 3,500 feet from the bottom to the top. Um, could equate it maybe to Colorado with the hairpin curves and lots of incline. So it was, a, it was interesting duty and much better than my previous duty. Being someone who was born between 1946 and 64, I am a baby boomer. Uh, there were a number of us, obviously. And because of that, I grew up with lots of veterans. They were around me all the time. And I've always had a lot of respect for veterans, and not because somebody told me to, but because of the way my family showed me that you can treat veterans with respect. In fact, my father, was a World War II veteran. He was a top turret gunner on a B-17 bomber and flew 25 successful missions in, uh, over Germany and was actually shot down at least twice. Uh, he never talked much about that. And uh, we found out after his passing that there was a chapter in a book about one of those times he was shot down. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about Black Thursday. That's when the... Okay, is this better? Actually, I only hear out of one ear. That's better for me, too. <laughs> anyway, my dad was on a B-17 bomber and uh, flew 25 successful missions. But after his death, we actually found out that he, uh, that one of his trips when they were shot down when he ended up in the English Channel was a chapter in a book. My dad's brother, Uncle Carl, uh, was in the U.S. Army, and he was uh, with the unit that was uh, at, at the Battle of the Bulge. And my mom's brother, my uncle Bob, was in India and Africa in World War II. And as I grew up, I understood that they did what they needed to do. And that's the way they looked at that. There was no bravado about, hey, look at me, I served in the military. They always just said, is what we're supposed to do. When I went to Vietnam, I served with a bunch of people who felt that same way. They were there and we were going to do the best we could, and we were there to do what we could do. I served in a unit that had a lot of variety. We had draftees and enlistees. We had people from all over the country with all kinds of different kinds of cultural backgrounds, and also a lot of racial diversity. And with the cultural thing, we had a little bit of fun. We had three guys from back east. One was Grabansky, one was Kowalski, and one was Krasinski. And we called them Ski 1, 2, and 3. So <laughs> you didn't have to kind of mess with that. <clears throat> Sometimes you needed to laugh. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Don't want to leave anything out. Some days you didn't know if you could do what you needed to do. But there was always someone else there to help out to back it up. And the one thing about my units is that they always had your back and they were always there to give you support. Every day that I was in Vietnam, and some people here, I see there's quite a few Vietnam veterans would concur, is I carried a calendar in my wallet. And every morning I cross off that day. And I worked to get shorter every day and trying to get back home. But when I left Vietnam, I flew back to Fort Lewis, Washington. 48 hours after I left Vietnam, I was sitting at the dinner table with my folks. That's what I wanted to have happen, but that's not what should happen. We should have had some kind of a debriefing. I think that's a one error that the U.S. military made to say, hey, by the way, since you've been gone, these are the things that have been happening, and this is what people are saying. And I know for a fact that I personally struggled to find some direction in my life. 
And after an extended time, I realized that uh, I knew two things that were for sure. One is that I was alive, and the other is that I loved living. And so, in essence, during that time of difficulty, I was blessed to have family and friends that gave me space when I needed it. They gave me support and closeness when I needed that too. And I must say that my wife Karen has probably provided the most support over the last number of years, in fact, 38 years uh, next Friday. The long and the short of it is I went back to school. I got a degree in biology, which is the science of life. I taught biology and chemistry and physics, human physiology. I tell people I got a little less intelligent, became a building principal, and then really not smart, decided to work in the district office. But I spent 30 some years in education, and I credit that for having people there to help me and to give me support and be positive. Enough about me. I want to get back to why I'm here today. Back in 19 or 2001, when I checked on this today to make sure, when this first middle school Veterans Day program was I was here, and I sat out there. I was actually working, that was my first year here in, uh, in the Lynchburg School District. And as I sat here and I listened to these kids, and their genuineness in their essays, with the things they said, with the music, with escorting you in. And I want you to know that that was the first time that I had ever felt my service was valued. The first time. And that was 30 years after I came back from Vietnam. That's not how it was supposed to be. And that has changed a lot. And that's a great thing, and that's very good. But when Mr. Scritchfield called me, I wanted to come and I wanted to thank these kids, this school district, for taking time to say thank you. And that has changed, and that's a, that's a good thing. But I can't tell you how emotional that was. My wife will tell you how that impacted my life. And it was a, a wonderful thing, so that's why Mr. Scritchfield asked me if I would come today. I said, without a doubt. Because many Vietnam veterans isolated themselves from their service. We didn't want people to know we served because there were people who were demeaning people for being a part of that war. Well, I want to tell you three things. One is that when those men and women were called, they went. And they serve. And I know for a fact that the individuals I served with and those units I was with in Vietnam served with dignity and honor. And I know for a fact that everybody who was serving in Vietnam and World War II and Korea and everything since wants those issues, those wars to end. To get back home. Because what we all live for is to get back home. Again, things have changed. It's gotten much better for, for all veterans, and that's a really good thing. And I think it's a great idea that this school district and these kids, because they're learning at a young age, the value, the importance of supporting our veterans. And this goes on to when they vote and make sure we take care of our veterans down the road and all those things. So, all of the freedoms that we have today, most of us don't know anything different. I never realized that it was different until I went to another country. But even on the best of times, when nothing's happened, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, we need people, our veterans, our people in service are protecting our country and many others around the world. And every veteran, I don't care what your job is, everybody who served had a job to do. And everybody needs to be respected because all those people work together, pull together to make things happen and be supported. So if you get a chance tomorrow, the next day, or another day, when I see a service member in the grocery store or at the 
Walmart or whatever, I always go out of my way to say hey. Because I know what it feels like when they know. So do that. Hang in there. So thank you again for having me. And thanks to the middle school staff who probably organized all this stuff. And I was reminded today, and, and I want to bring this up before I quit. I was talking to Brian. And he told me, he said, 16 years ago, after this presentation, you went back to your office and you emailed me. And you said thank you. Because that was the first time that I've honestly felt people, not that my family didn't support me, not that my friends didn't support me, but overall, that was the first time when the public in general had actually said thank you. So from the bottom of my heart to all of you, Thank you for being veterans, for doing what you did, wherever you did it. Have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Nelson, for speaking today, your service to our country and to this community. I truly appreciate it. Before uh, the eighth grade choir sings their song, I Hear Liberty Singing by Greg Gilpin, I want to make sure that one more person gets recognized that was out in the comments just a little bit ago. San Francisco served in the Navy. Give him a round of applause for it. Doing bad duty.
Would you all please join us in, as we sing America the Beautiful. The words to the song are on the back of your program. <clears throat> Gary Nelson, our speaker, the American Legion Riders, Scott's Hometown Foods, Foods, and the Booster Club. Thank you to our local American Legion Post and Color Guard. I would also like to thank our maintenance staff, our eighth grade teachers, and all the staff members who helped plan and organize today's program. I would also like to thank the students and all those who have participated or contributed to this event. And most of all, thank you to all of you, our veterans for your service to our country. Before we retire the colors and conclude the program, I would like to invite you and everyone else to a reception in the foyer of the middle school gym. Just through those doors, through the next set of doors, going out the gym, we'll be right in there. See all the veterans, have some cookies and some, some drinks, coffee, and lemonade. You'll be directed there as you leave. And finally, if you look back of your button, there is a star on the back of just one of them. The person with the star on their button is the recipient of the flower arrangement sitting on the front table as you came in this afternoon. If you will come forward after the program has ended and after we play taps um, and retire the colors, you will be given your award. Thank you all for coming. We hope you enjoyed your time with us today. Will you all please stand as TAPS is played and remain standing as the American Legion retires the color.
was reminded of one group I forgot to thank. All of those spouses of the men and women that have served and for our country, we thank you. So that concludes our program. Like I said, if you'd like to join us over in the middle school, Jim Foyer, we'd love to see you over there. Thank you.